We're gonna go back to August 6th, 1966. We're in a town called Everman, which is a little bit south of Fort Worth, Texas. Three teenagers on that hot muggy night are hanging around at a local baseball diamond. You had 15 year old Johnny Marcus Dunham, his cousin, 17 year old Robert Hugh Brand, and Robert's girlfriend, 16 year old Edna Louise Sullivan. Johnny was visiting his cousin from California at the time. It's summertime, school's out, and they're just hanging around, talking, doing nothing. Little did these kids know that that night would be their last night alive because two local losers fueled by alcohol and violence were driving around the area looking for something to get into. These losers were 20 year old Kenneth McDuff and 18 year old Roy Dale Green. So earlier that day, Kenneth and Roy, they were working for McDuff's father. He was uh, some kind of a general contractor, something along those sorts. After they're done at work, they go to the bar and they start drinking and drinking and drinking. They're getting drunk. And then Kenneth starts telling Roy about uh, his sick and disgusting fantasies involving uh, hurting women. After that, they start driving around town and that's when they come upon the three teens at that baseball diamond. Kenneth tells Roy, hey, I'm gonna rob him. So he goes under his seat and pulls out a 38 caliber revolver. So as he's approaching the teens, Roy's in the car just looking at this. Kenneth goes up to the teens, pulls out his gun, and tells them, give me your wallets or your money, whatever you got. Now, they're teenagers. I don't know how much money a teenager has on him. They gave him whatever they had. And then he forces all three into the trunk of their car. They were driving, I believe, a mid-50s uh, Ford. So, forces them into the trunk of their car and he proceeds to drive their car while he tells Roy to follow him down some uh, unknown country road. So they're driving for what maybe it seems about uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Now Roy's driving Kenneth's car and uh, he doesn't know what's going on. So he's just doing as he's told. This kid is you know, 18 years old, but he looks up to Kenneth like that this guy is cool or what have you. Kenneth goes into this um, farm road or what have you, gets out, opens the trunk, and according to Roy, he's watching this sitting in Kenneth's car. These boys are on their knees in the trunk begging for their lives. Kenneth pulls out the gun and shoots each boy once in the face. Then he grabs Edna, takes her into the uh, wooded area and proceeds to violently rape her using a broomstick. After he's got his fill, he takes the broomstick and he kills her, strangles her to death. Roy is looking at this in utter bewilderment. Kenneth gets in the car. He backs the car up into a fence line area and leaves all the dead kids right where they lay. The next day, their bodies are discovered and it's all over the news. Roy is not a killer. Immediately, he calls the police and he tells them everything that happened. The police arrest Kenneth McDuff and charge him with three counts of first degree murder. And in exchange for a more lenient sentence, Roy testifies against Kenneth in court. This bastard, Kenneth McDuff, who by that time, the news media has labeled him the broomstick killer, is sentenced to die via the electric chair. However, luckily, Kenneth 
had somebody on his side to escape the electric chair. In 1972, uh, the United States, they banned the uh, death penalty. So you had all these people on death row all across the country, all across the country, getting their sentences commuted to life. Not only did Kenneth McDuff escape the death penalty, you're not gonna believe this, but he was actually later on paroled in October of 1989. Uh, it was some kind of uh, court issue. Uh, the Texas prison system was overcrowded. Um, somebody possibly had filed a civil rights lawsuit on behalf of the inmates. And Texas started releasing inmates uh, about 150 a day. And this guy killed three kids was actually set free now his freedom didn't last very long because he was right back in prison within about nine months when he was walking down the street he seen some black kids in this town that he was living in at the time rosebud and he pulled out a knife and he threatened them calling them the n-word and all that they call the police he goes back to prison now violating your parole you can go back to prison for the rest of your life they lock him up. He should have never, ever had been released after that. But no, they release him yet again a few months later. So Kenneth McDuff would go on to kill upwards of six more women. Kenneth McDuff loved to do three things. Drink until he was blackout drunk. Smoke crack cocaine and have violent sex with prostitutes. Two of those prostitutes he murdered, Brenda Thompson and Regina Moore. And he would go on to kill more women, including 28-year-old accountant Colleen Reed, who he had kidnapped from a car wash in Austin, Texas. This vile monster piece of filth made it all the way to being on America's Most Wanted after the police figured out that he was the one behind these murders. Now I can go on in more detail about Kenneth McDuff and I already did, I did a video about him on my other channel. So I've basically have already told his story. If you wanna see the video, I'll put it in the link. I know many of you have already watched it, however. This sick son of a bitch should have never, ever ever got out of prison and because of that at least bare minimum six women and they believe it's uh as high as at 11 lost their lives and uh these are the kids two of the boys that lost their lives this is robert on my right and johnny on my left Johnny didn't even live in Texas. He was visiting from California, but they buried the cousins together. Edna's buried in a separate cemetery. And uh, these are Robert's parents right here. One of the absolute most heartbreaking stories. A filthy monster kills three kids, sentenced to die, and is released from prison to kill probably a dozen more people. I was actually, I think I had a conversation with somebody who worked at the prison where Kenneth McDuff was at before his execution. He was executed uh, back in, I believe, 1998. I think it was June. No, November. November of 1998, he was executed. And he said that Kenneth McDuff was the most scariest person that he had ever been around. Rest in peace to Johnny, Robert, Edna, and all the victims of that uh, evil bastard, Kenneth McDuff.
All right, guys, I am out of here. I'll catch up with you later. Have a good one. Peace out.